could Calvinism be a stumbling block to the spread of the gospel of Christ? Calvinism? What is Calvinism? Now, Calvinism is the term applied to a belief in a high view of the sovereignty of God, especially when it relates to salvation. Calvinists are convinced that the Bible teaches that a man is sinfully corrupt throughout his entire being and cannot make himself acceptable to God through any amount of effort of his own. Calvinists hold that in eternity past, God chose out some among mankind for his own. Okay? That's what they call the elect. Calvinists, um, in the course of time, God has, they believe that in the course of time, God grants repentance and faith to his elect so that they might be awakened to their sinful state and need for grace. And uh, those he saves, they believe, that will be preserved for eternity by the Lord and will persevere in following him. For example, if they truly belong to him, they cannot and will never ever fall away because he keeps them secure. Now, the point which causes some to believe that Calvinism has something uh, which probably uh, tends to hinder evangelism is the aspect of limited atonement. Okay? Limited atonement. Now, this point of Calvinism teaches that Christ died only for the elect. The theological argument offered is, if Christ in fact died for every single human in a uh, world's history, then no one would go to hell since their sins are already paid for. Okay? And uh, since we know scripture teaches many spend an eternity separated from God, uh, it must be that their sins were not covered in the atonement. Either or there are people in hell for whom Christ died a scripturally insupportable conclusion by the Calvinists. How can it be? And they were elect. Now you see some may say Christ paid for sins of everyone but it's up to uh, to them to decide and accept him. That is uh, the truth of the gospel. Jesus died for everyone because the Bible says while he was still sinners, God, Jesus, died for us. Okay? Now, this is the whole issue between Calvinism, which is also called Monarchianism, and Armanianism, which is also called Sygenism. Okay? For if a man casts the deciding vote, then how is God sovereign? Furthermore, if Christ's sacrifice needed a man's acceptance to validate it, then it can't be the all-sufficient sacrifice the Bible says it is. I know there I've confused you. But the Bible says that... Uh, Jesus died for our sins, okay? So that whosoever believes in him will not perish, but have everlasting life. Now, whosoever means everyone out there. And it is not because we were good that he died for us. It is because he loved us. I don't know if you understand. He loved us. He chose us. And this is a thing which the Calvinists usually try to, to take. Okay, Ephesians, Ephesians uh, 1 verses 3. See what the Bible says here. 
Blessed be the God and the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places in Christ, according as he has chosen us, elected us in him, before the foundation of the world, that we should be holy and without blame before him. Having predestinated us into the adoption of children by Jesus Christ to himself, according to the good pleasure of his will. Predestination. Hmm. This is exactly the doctrine of the Calvinists. Now, let me show you where the problem comes in. You see, the Bible tells us one thing, that, the, that uh, he loved us first, okay? Jesus loved us first. And I want to show you where the Calvinists go wrong and also what is not wrong with them. Because uh, they are not all wrong. There are some places which are right. And others, we have a point to disagree. Okay? The Bible says in 1 John 4.19, We love him because he, loved, he first loved us. He first loved us. He first elected us. Now, you see, one thing that you have to understand is that uh, the Bible tells us in Revelation 13 verses 8, it says, uh, it says, And all that dwell upon the earth shall worship, shall worship him whose names are not written, uh, and, uh, sorry, and all that dwell upon the earth shall worship him whose names are not written in the book of life, of the lamb slain from the foundation of the world. Think about this. The lamb slain from the foundation of the world. Now, if Jesus was slain from the foundation of the world, it means before Adam and Eve were created, God already knew that man would fail. And he created a plan, which was the lamb he was slain before the foundation of the world, before even Adam and Eve were made. Why did he do this? So that whosoever will believe in him will not perish but have everlasting life. Now, let me explain to you what exactly predestination is. Which The, the Calvinists, they believe that uh, only the chosen people will go to heaven. Any other person who was not chosen will not see, will not see heaven. But uh, I don't think this is a true because... If uh, it's only the chosen who will go to heaven, then what about the people who are not chosen? When you go to uh, its judgment day and you stand before God and you tell him, he, he asks you, why did you do sin? You have a chance to tell him, God, why are you asking me this and you did not choose me? You did not choose me so for salvation, then why are you sending me to hell? I am innocent. I'm not going to hell because of my, uh, my mistakes. It's because you did not choose me. You see, Calvinism, to some point, is wrong because it denounces the fact that you should preach to people and tell them that Jesus loves them and is for them to accept salvation. It's not for them to think if they were chosen or not. Now, let me, in simple terms, explain to you what predestination is all about. Forget John Calvin and this uh, Calvinist story. Now, you see, salvation is like, um, let's say you're a lawyer, okay? You're a lawyer, and you have two sons. And uh, these two sons, you want them to become lawyers, just like you. So, you, you bring in and you plan, you have a plan, whereby you know, I have set every path right, I have predestinated these two children of mine to become lawyers. How? You take them to a law school. You get them to parties where lawyers are involved. You buy them all the law materials and everything and take them uh, to places where they'll mingle with other lawyers. You know, you put everything right for them to become lawyers. But along the way, one of the children decides, no, I don't want to be a lawyer. I want to be a musician. Now, this child who has decided to be a musician, he will not end up being a lawyer, but the other one will become a lawyer because the predestination was there. But one child decided, I don't want to be 
I don't want to be a lawyer. I want to be a musician. So these two children of yours, you have predestinated them to becoming lawyers, but one choose, chose by his own will a different path. That's exactly what the Bible says when it says that the lamb was slain from the foundation of the world. We were all predestined for salvation. Jesus chose us before we chose him. He laid every path right so that whoever will believe in him will not perish but have everlasting life. Are you seeing this? So when you say salvation, there is something like limited atonement for some people and the others are not having the same salvation, then you're lying. Jesus died for everyone. There was nothing like limited atonement. Are you getting the point? You see, something else that you have to understand also, I'm not punching out Calvinism in every way, because they are also right. They, yes, there is predestination, but they go to an extreme. You know, you can't be an extremist. The Bible says, you have to rightly divide, not overly divide. 2 Timothy 2.15 Rightly divide the word of truth, not overly divide and say, no, there are some people who are chosen, others who are not chosen. No, that's not, that's not the truth. But Calvinism also, and most, uh, and most anything else, if, if out of balance, could hinder evangelism. This is very true. It could hinder evangelism. If you really become an extremist of Calvinism, you could uh, hinder evangelism. Because you'll be saying Jesus died for some specific people. But if you're not an extremist, then you're not hindering evangelism. You are rightly dividing. You see, the hypothetical argument raised against Calvinism is this. It is said that since God chose his own in eternity past, and since he grants repentance and faith needed in order to come to him, and uh, since all he has chosen will, in fact, come to him, as the Bible says in John 6, 37, all who come to him are eternally secure. Which is true. But, okay, you have to understand, this choosing is for everyone. It's not for specific people. That's where Calvinism extremists go wrong. We were predestined. Yes, that's true. But they are extremists who go so far and they dilute the whole essence of predestination. Okay? Now, uh, you have to understand one thing. That uh, Jesus gave a revelation of himself in creation and conscience. In Romans 1 to 2. And uh, he has specifically chosen to communicate the gospel message through believers sharing the message of salvation. Okay? So, whether one is a Calvinist or not, evangelism is the responsibility or, of all believers. Historically, Calvinism not only diminished the Calvinists, okay? Not only diminished the Calvinists, a uh, burden for soul, but it purified it. The Calvinists were among the greatest evangelists. Even today, they are, they are still there, so many of them, okay? Have greatest evangelists in the history of the world. They were motivated by love for their Lord and Savior who chose them and saved them from the foundation of the world. Like I've read you and like also the Bible says here in Ephesians. Ephesians 1 verses 4. Okay. Ephesians 1 4. According as he has chosen us, chosen us in him before the foundation of the world that you should be holy and without blame before him. Okay? Just like I've shown you. Now, before we truly understand the sovereignty of God in salvation, we often think the burden is on us to produce decisions for Christ. No, Christ predestined us, he chose us, and he died for our sins. Okay? He did everything. So the decision was not even ours. All that he needed us to do is just to believe. Okay? So, 
partly the Calvinists who don't overly divide, they are right, we are predestined. But those who overly divide and say it is only for the elect few, then they are lying. That's not true. Okay? Are, are you seeing how I'm trying to balance this? If we act, most of the time, we act as if a person's salvation is dependent on himself. No, that's not true. It's dependent on Christ. So when we share the gospel and it is rejected, we somehow think we failed to talk to that person into believing and that we need a more clever or polished presentation of the plan of salvation. We may be tempted to water down the gospel next time in order to get the desired uh, response. But once we understand the doctrines of grace, yeah? once we understand the doctrines of grace, the pressure to force a decision is removed. Now we witness because we want to be faithful to our dear Lord. Evangelism, okay? Evangelism is among Calvinists driven, uh, sorry, Calvinist, uh, evangelism among Calvinists is driven by the familiar face that by his grace and his glory, no, no, uh, 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 by his grace, we were saved. And we are saved for his glory, which is true. But if you go extreme and say it is not for everyone, it is for some people, then that's where Calvinism goes wrong. So Calvinism should not hinder evangelism. This is uh, what you have to understand. Calvinism should not hinder evangelism. If anything, it should give our witnessing great boldness with pure motives. We understand that we were chosen, we were predestined by God for salvation. Like I've given you the example of the, 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 the lawyer and his two children. We were chosen and he chose for us uh, uh, to be, to, he chose that we can be saved. And if someone makes a wrong choice and he says he doesn't want, then he was chosen but he refused. I don't know if you have gotten my point. So it's really, really important to understand this doctrine of Calvinism. When they go extreme, they're wrong. When they go rightly divide, then they are right. That's something you have to understand. And uh, we are God's elect. That is very true. But God elected every human being and he predestined them to be saved. So if you overly divide and you say i it's only some click of people some you know some it's it's like the way people say we are only the elites we are only a, a, a specific uh, kind of people who cannot you know you 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 have to be saved whether you like it or not no that's that's not true there's nothing like limited atonement atonement was for everyone atonement was for everyone okay and Jesus died for everyone because we love him, not because we are good, but because he loved us first and he chose us even before we chose him. While we were still sinners, Christ died for us. He was the lamb slain from the foundation of the world because he knew what we would do. And he laid a good, perfect plan for us to be saved. I don't know if I've answered this question. And I've been able to explain to you. So, if you're a Calvinist, ask yourself, am I overly dividing? Am I an extremist? Or am I uh, knowing that Jesus predestined all of us, not just some of us? Okay? So, if you're there and you're not saved, please, the gospel is found in 1 Corinthians 15, 1 through 4. And it's all about believing what Jesus did for you. What Jesus did for you at the cross. He died for your sins. So that if you believe in him, you'll not perish but have everlasting life. All you need to do is just to tell him what you've understood and believed. You tell him, Jesus, now I understand that you died for my sins. You were buried and you rose again as it is written in the scriptures. Once you do that, my friends, you're saved and you're sealed and sanctified. God bless you. Hope this has been a blessing to you. You can uh, like this video, you can share it, and you can subscribe to watch more each and every time whenever we post. God bless you.